what is inside a modern CPU? Here's a diagram of, of a very highly simplified, massively simplified diagram of a, of a central processing unit. Okay, so I'm wondering, this is the green bit. So the green bit is the central processing unit itself. Central... Right, what is that word? Let's do it again. Central... <laughs> processing... Gosh, this is really hard to write for some reason. Central processing unit. Okay, CPU, central processing unit, CPU, central processing unit. Right, what I want to do is I want to go through each of these different bits of a CPU and I'm going to fill in this table underneath. So what I've done is I've listed everything out there, so but hopefully that'll that'll get us um, a nice set of notes about what these, these things do. I'm going to start off with the with the clock here. Okay, so I'm going to go with this funny thing here, which is the CPU clock itself. Now, it doesn't actually tell the time, the CPU clock. Okay, let me underline that. Doesn't tell the time, but what it does do is it provides pulses, pulses, and distributes those around the CPU to keep everything kind of synchronized. So we'll just write down what the the clock does. So it pulses to keep all the components to keep all components components in sync okay so synchronized right all right next on our list is the control unit the control unit is right here this blue one so I'm just going to abbreviate that CU okay and hopefully you'll you'll start to pick up the abbreviations for these things because they are what used when you're talking about the components of the CPU I tend to use those abbreviations. So I'll write the abbreviations down in the list as well. So in the control unit itself, uh, CU, CU, the control unit controls, essentially coordinates. I'm going to use the word coordinates. Coordinates the processes in the CPU. All right, so that's what the control unit does which is there. Now, inside the control unit, you've actually, oh, actually, before we do before we do that bit, we'll do this one down here. This one is the arithmetic and logic unit. Again, be careful how you say that. The arithmetic and logic unit is that sort of orangey colour, the ALU. So we'll write the abbreviation there as well, so you've got it. The ALU. This performs maths and logic operations, as you can imagine. Performs maths and logic operations correctly called the arithmetic and logic unit rather than just the arithmetic logic unit okay um, inside this control unit there is um, a couple of registers okay so they're like really fast small tiny fast memory locations this one is the current instruction register CIR? So this is the next one on my list. So the CIR. This holds holds the machine code for the current instruction. I'm going to fit the word instruction on there. Probably not. Right, the current instruction, right. Obviously the name kind of implies that, so hopefully that should be fairly obvious. Right, what have we got next? Um, the, uh, okay, inside, the other thing inside here, this one, the program counter. The program counter, which is the other component inside the, um, the control unit, which is right there. So it's referred to as, as PC. This holds the address the memory address holds the memory address for the next instruction right hang on a sec okay memory address for the next instruction I'll underline that and I'll explain why I've underlined it in a second when I've gone to it okay the accumulator is next the accumulator is inside the arithmetic and logic unit which is here it's abbreviated as ACC 
for accumulator, okay? So if I go back down to my list, the accumulator there is abbreviated as ACC. And the accumulator itself, um, where's my mouse gone, holds the result, the result of the last calculation that was carried out. The last calculation. It's a bit like the display on a calculator. Okay, it holds or the the answer key on a calculator. It can't, it's kind of got the last answer in it that that you, you calculated. Okay, let's have a look. What's next? Sure, I keep flipping back and forwards. I can't think of a better way of doing this to be honest. The the M um, the memory address register. Right. Okay, the memory address register is here. It's this one. M A. Ah, okay. The memory address register, there's two registers, there's fast little memory locations, there's two fast little memory locations called registers that seem, that, that look very similar but perform very different things. So the memory address register is that one, and that's just here. So M-A-R, right, specifically holds the address, this is the memory address, of data in the RAM being read or written at that particular point. So that's the memory address register or the MAR. Okay, the next one's the memory data register. Have a look where that is. It's this other box here. Memory data register. Sometimes that's called the memory buffer register as well, the MBR. Um, but you may you may see it written in either way, but I'll use memory data register because it's the one that seems to be preferred anyway. So we'll go with that one. Memory data register, where are we? Right here. So MDR. MDR. And the memory data register holds the data being read or written. Okay. So it's the actual physical data, rather than the address of the data, which is in the memory address register, so it's the actual physical data that's being written right there. Okay, address bus. Let's just, um, oh, that's interesting. Okay, let's just double check where the address bus is. Okay, the address bus. Now the address bus is this one here that connects the memory address register, you know, hopefully that will make sense, to this bit, which is the RAM. We'll come to that in a second. So it's this bit. So this is the address bus. I think we squeeze that in. This is just called the address bus. Address bus, which is there. Okay, the address bus itself, which is there, connects the memory address register, the MAR, remember that's here, to the main memory, to the main memory and it is one way I'll just show you the arrow again up there you see the arrow just goes the one direction there the memory address register is a one-way register right <clears throat> the next one is this one here which is called the data bus a bus by the way is not a big red thing you get on to take you around London a bus is a collection of wires that connect two components in a computer system together it carries data so that's what a bus is the data bus itself big long list the data bus is here connects the memory data register mdr remember that could be the memory buffer register but i'm going to put mdr memory data register to the main memory and the crucial difference between the memory data register, sorry, the address bus and the data bus is that the data bus is two way. And you'll notice that on the arrow when I show you the arrow there, that that arrow is going both directions. Data can be sent from the memory data register into the RAM or from the RAM back into the memory data register. Okay, the last one, which is this big white box here, is the RAM, the random access memory. Okay, and the RAM, which is that one down here. Is, uh, is the random access memory or the RAM. This holds the programs and the data 
being currently executed, it's, act it's actually a, vo a von Neumann architecture, this, because the programs and the data, lowercase v, um, occupy the same physical memory. Okay, so the von Neumann architecture machine right there. So, um, looking back at this diagram, I think I've filled everything in. By the way, these grey bits here aren't necessarily things that you should learn about, but I've put them on simply for completeness. As a set of registers, there's also a way of connecting, and this is highly simplified, so you know there are exceptions to this. Um, ways of connecting input and output devices through controllers and buffers into the RAM. Um, not always the way it's done, but it's a simplified version of it anyway. And some people have asked me in the past, you know, well, how do the input devices put? Where do they put their data? When does it get in there? And where do the output devices get their data from? Well, this is a simplified way of doing it. Okay. If you want to pause the video at that point and sort of take in that diagram, then please feel free to do that. Okay. So the last little bit to talk about, which is kind of a side, one more thing that's in that is actually inside. A CPU is cache memory. Now, cache memory is a funny, it's a funny old word. Cache memory. I'll write it in here. Cache memory. Some people pronounce it cache a for some reason, but it's not. A cache is a temporary store of things. Um, in this case, it's instructions and data that's been read from the from the main memory itself. So it stores. The cache memory is designed to stores to store recently oops recently used data um, you know I'm not going to go into a massive amount of depth on how that works at this stage now this diagram basically shows the arrangement between um, a, this is a dual core processor so a processor with two processing cores on it oops that should be core one and this one is core two and each of those cores has a, um, a little tiny, and we're talking, you know, a couple of kilobytes, four kilobytes, say, of really fast random access memory, um, which sits in uh, right next to the core. This this one that's right next to it, it's called level one, L1, level one cache, and it's really fast. It's the fastest memory, but it's also the smallest, so it can't hold a lot of stuff. And I'll explain what cache is used for in a sec. <coughs> it don't know a lot of stuff, but it's really quick. Straight underneath that, you've got level two cache, level two, which is slightly slower, but a little bit bigger. You're not talking massively bigger here. And underneath that, further down still, you've got level three cache. The main difference between level three cache and the other cache memory is that the level three cache is shared. Now, let me just finish drawing this on um, slow, but it's also shared this one. Now, the buses themselves, so these buses here, connect the CPU to the random access memory or the RAM. The problem is, and the reason that cache is used, is because the RAM is the slowest out of all these memories. <coughs> if data needs to be fetched from RAM, continually then the CPU will run quite slowly because this forms this kind of creates a bottleneck so what happens is is that the CPU when it gets data from the RAM stores temporarily that data plus the memory address that it's got it from in these cache memories here so that it can retrieve it faster should it need it within the next few sort of you know milliseconds nanoseconds or whatever it's doing it's little work um, it, it's worked for okay so we've talked about the components of the modern CPU there's a lot of them and you need to learn that what they all do and also a little bit about cache memory and what it's for hopefully we've answered the question what is inside a modern CPU each of the components in a CPU work together in order to process data